Uh, my name is George West. I'm the current chairman of Campaign for an Independent Britain to recover our own ability to make our own laws in this country. Uh, something that has been surrendered by politicians from all the three main parties ever since the late 1960s. It's our entry into the common market was based upon deceit. How can anything based upon deceit be good? Most people are completely unaware of what was going on at that time in the building behind me. The whole entry into the common market was passed through Parliament in three separate stages. The first stage was Edward Heath putting a motion before Parliament to say that entering the common market was a good thing in principle. No one knew the terms, no one knew exactly what was to be involved. It was simply a vote to go in as a good thing in principle. He won that motion. The following year, then we had the signing of the treaty. When Edward Heath went to Brussels to sign the treaty, and would you believe that at that time he was the only man who knew what was in the treaty? And the third stage was the final reading where the bill was put through Parliament, still without knowing what was involved. This, as Nigel Spearing, our Vice President, who was an MP at the time, said, and this can be checked in Hansard, it was like signing a blank check. But that was what was behind our going into the common market and the very narrow vote of 309 to 301 uh, to, to go into the common market. It wasn't just the Conservative Party. There were people in the Labour Party who were also opposed. So there was cross-party and pretty fierce opposition at the time. But... Edward Heath, with the help of five Liberal votes, carried the day and in we went. Now as far as uh, the deceit is concerned, it all happened again in 1983. At the general election of that year, under Michael Foote, there was a very comprehensive manifesto, a main feature of which was that if elected, they would take us out of the European community and take us out, begin the negotiations within a very short period of time. Unfortunately, the Labour Party lost that vote, but two men gained their seats for the very first time in Parliament. This is one of those gentlemen. His name is Tony Blair. And this was his election address and photograph to his Sedgefield constituents in which he promised we'll negotiate a withdrawal from the EEC which has drained our natural resources and destroyed our jobs. What could be plainer than that? And as soon as they took their seats they forgot the promise even down to more recently when we were promised a referendum. As a judge, a British judge has recently ruled that manifesto promises should not lead to reasonable expectations. In other words, promise anything just to get the power. Now, what can we do about this? It isn't the case that all politicians are of this sort that can't be trusted. There are, in that building, a few who are getting on in years in the most cases, who steadfastly oppose our membership of the European Union. They meet together, and I am part of that, and I'm proud to be part of it, once a month in the Lords under the title Better Off Out. And this is a mixture of Lords and MPs working towards a bill one day which will take us out because we can only come out through legislation which requires majority support for such a bill. How do we get that support? 
very, very difficult. I hope that all the new intake of 233 MPs will begin to study the background and understand what has taken place and the effects upon this country and will come to the same conclusion that we were at in the early 1970s and many of those MPs, both Tory and Labour, that it was not good and not in our best interest to surrender power uh, to the European community. So, what can you do about it? Because most people now, so many people think, what's the point of voting for anyone? They're all the same, they tell us lies, but of course, if you do nothing at all, you have to stand by the consequences. It's no good complaining and doing nothing. So what can you do? You can write to your MP, telephone him or her, and ask about the situation, what their policy is on the European Union. And if they still think, after everything that has been said and published about this and the effects upon this country, that they still want membership of the sort we have now, then you simply say you will not be voting for that person at the next election. I tell you, losing their seat is the only thing that frightens them and is the only thing that might make a difference. Please look up on the internet the Better Off Out and read about that. And look on the website www.eurosceptic.org.uk to find out about the cross-party campaign for an independent Britain. Thank you very much.